subscribe to our channel for latest video series on gain UGC net and more. Also press the bell icon so that you never miss an update on any latest video. For more information you can visit our website or call on the numbers below. If x of s is an improper rational function. Improper rational function means what does improper rational function mean? Degree of numerator is greater than or equal to degree of denominator. Number of zeros is greater than or equal to number of poles. Then what we are saying is by long division method, see since degree of numerator is more. So we can just perform long division with this these uh, functions with numerator and denominator. So using long division, I can just write this as in this form in terms of question plus remainder upon uh, this denominator right so i can just perform long division after i've performed this long division this r by d is going to be a proper rational fun fun function right this is going to be a proper rational function why because degree of remainder is going to be less than degree of denominator in any case right and this question is going to have some terms of s uh, inverse laplace of which can be found out using uh, in terms of delta functions okay in your terms of delta dash functions so using this using this property using this property inverse laplace of this q to the power s can be found out easily and since r by d is a proper rational function this can be computed by again expanding into partial fractions and then so on Okay, so if we are having an inverse improper uh, rational function, this is how we are performing the inverse Laplace. And in case of uh, rational functions, proper rational functions, we have seen how we are performing inverse Laplace. So now let us look at a few questions uh, relating to inverse Laplace transforms. So look at the first question now. They have given you a function 2s plus 4 upon s square plus 4s plus 3 with three different ROCs, three different possible ROCs and they are asking you to find the inverse Laplace transform in each case. So firstly, what do we do? First step is going to be expressing this function in terms of partial fraction. So we have already performed partial fraction of the same function. Uh, again, we are going to see that. So this can be expressed in terms of this like pole zero form. Now these ha this function has two uh, simple poles. So I can just write it like this. To find C1, what do I do? Multiply the complete function with uh, S plus 1 and keep S equal to minus 1. Doing which we are going to obtain 1. So we have taken this uh, already okay, in the when we are explaining partial fraction. So right now I am just writing the values. So it is going to be 1. Which means that this x of s is going to be 1 by s plus 1 plus 1 by s plus 3. Now see, inverse Laplace transform of both of these functions are known to us separately. Okay, depending on the given ROC, we can just find out inverse Laplace. If you just look at the first part, it says that, see this function has two poles, two poles occurring at minus 1 and minus 3. If my ROC is greater than minus 1, if my ROC is sigma greater than minus 1 or real part of s greater than minus 1, that is right to rightmost pole, righter to rightmost pole. This means that this is going to be a right-handed signal. Okay, we are going to have all right-handed terms. Then inverse Laplace for 1 plus uh, 1 by s plus 1 is going to be e to the power minus t ut since I wanted a right-handed signal. And inverse Laplace for this is going to be e to the power minus 3t ut. Right, so it's going to be e to the power minus t plus e to the power minus 3t into u of t. Fine. Now look at the second part. If my ROC is real part of S is less than minus 3, that is left to leftmost poles. It had two poles occurring at minus 1 and minus 3. If my ROC is sigma less than minus 3 or real part of S less than minus 3, that is left to leftmost pole. It means that this is going to be a left-handed signal, right? Left-handed signal. If this is a left-handed signal, then inverse Laplace transform for this term 1 by S plus 1 is going to be minus e to the power minus minus t u of minus t see we are selecting this u of t and u of minus t based on the roc only that is why specifying roc with the laplace transform is very important okay that is the importance of roc and inverse laplace for this term is going to be e to the power minus 3t u of minus t okay 
So I can write this as e to the power minus t plus e to the power minus 3t into u of minus t and one minus sign here also. Right? Now if this ROC is a finite vertical strip, is a finite duration, finite uh, value, that means that this signal, this x of s, this x of t is going to be a infinite duration signal, two sided signal. Then for the signal to be two sided, what should happen? One of these terms should have ROC, which is a real part of s greater than minus 3. One term should have uh, ROC, real part of s less than minus 1. Only then these two are going to overlap, right? So what is going to be the inverse Laplace transform? This term, see this is the rightmost uh, writer pole, okay? So this should have ROC which occurs left of minus 1. So inverse Laplace is going to be minus e to the power minus t u t. And this is going to be a this is going to be a right handed signal which means it is going to have okay this is going to be u of minus t and this is going to have inverse Laplace e power minus 3 t u t. Okay so this is how based on ROC of the signal we are going to define inverse Laplace. See this was similar function but depending on different ROCs three different inverse Laplace transforms are possible right. So this is how we are performing inverse Laplace. Now uh, next again we are going to take this uh, one example that we already saw. We are just going to see the inverse Laplace for uh, that function. So, if so uh, seen the partial fraction of this function already, we saw that this has multiple poles occurring at uh, s is equal to minus 5. So, its partial fraction expansion was something like this 2 by s plus 3 minus 1 by s plus 5 minus 10 by s plus 5 whole square. Okay, this is how we expanded it in partial fraction expansion. Now, suppose the ROC for this function is given as ROC was given as real part of s greater than minus 3 okay roc was given like this now you need to find the inverse laplace transform now see this function had three poles two poles occurring at s is equal to minus 5 and one pole occurring at s is equal to minus 3 now roc is real part of s greater than minus 3 which is right to the rightmost pole s is equal to minus 3 is going to be the rightmost pole right now my roc is writer to rightmost pole which means that xt is going to be a right handed signal Okay, one-sided signal, right-handed signal. So, accordingly, you are going to take inverse Laplace, okay? If this is a right-handed signal, all the terms are going to have ut. No term is going to have u minus t. So, inverse Laplace for the first term is going to be 2 into e power minus 3t ut. For this term, we are going to have e to the power minus 5t ut. Since this term has a square in its denominator, we saw that for having a square in the denominator, that is differentiation in S property, we multiply with T in time domain. So, this is going to be 10 T e to the power minus 5 T U T. Right? This is what this is what it is going to be. So, I can just take uh, U T common. So, so, I am going to obtain. Right? So, this is what uh, the inverse Laplace transform for this function is going to be. Okay. Now, we consider one example of a uh, improper rational function. Suppose you are given an improper rational function x of s which is s cube plus 2s square plus 6 upon s square plus 3s and its ROC is real part of s greater than 0. So, clearly this is, a, uh, this is going to be a right handed signal. Okay. Let us see. Now, see. What happens when we have a function of this kind, when we are having a improper rational function, what do we need to do first? Firstly, we are going to form long division. Long division means I am going to multiply this numerator with. See, you cannot perform a partial fraction in an improper rational function. Okay, for that purpose, we need a proper rational function. So, what do I do? I first try to convert it in terms of quotient and remainder. Okay, so... Uh, Okay, I multiply this with s, s. So this is going to be s cube plus 3s square. Perform subtraction. This is going to cancel. This is going to be minus s square plus 6 into minus 1 minus s square minus 3s. Again, it's going to be 3s plus 6, right? So x of s, x of s, this function can be written as s minus 1, which is the quotient plus remainder 
upon upon denominator okay this is how we can express this okay this is what we saw in improper rational functions also now see this is again a proper rational function right so what do i do i separate it i am suppose i am supposing that this is an another function separate function so i can say that this is and this can be expressed in terms of partial fractions like this where c1 can be found easily by multiply this function with s and keeping s is equal to 0 so what is going to happen s into 3s plus 6 upon s into s plus 3 at s is equal to 0 when you just perform this you are going to get c1 as 2 to find c2 what do we do similar procedure into x1s and putting s is equal to minus 3 so what do you get s plus 3 into 3s plus 6 upon s into s plus 3 is going to cancel putting s is equal to minus 3 so going to be minus 9 plus 6 minus 2 upon 2 minus 3 1 right so what can i write x of s as now i can express x of s as s minus 1 plus 2 upon s plus 1 upon s plus 3 and roc for this was given as real part of s greater than 0 right so uh, x is going to be a right handed signal and since we know inverse Laplace of all these functions, I can just write xt as. So we know inverse Laplace of s is going to be del dash t minus inverse Laplace of 1 is going to be del t plus 2. 1 by s uh, inverse Laplace is going to be ut and inverse for this is going to be e to the power minus 3t ut. Right. So my xt is uh, going to be del dash t minus del t plus 2 plus e to the power minus 3t into ut right uh, see since my x of s was a improper rational function power of numerator was greater than power of denominator that is why my inverse laplace transform x of t is having impulse function and its derivatives okay it contains impulses and its derivative right this happened because x of s was a improper fraction right uh, now look at one more question, last question from this model. Suppose x of s is given as 2 plus 2s e to the power minus 2s plus 4 e to the power minus 4s upon s square plus 4s plus 3 and its ROC is defined as real part of s greater than minus 1 and you are required to find out the inverse Laplace for this function. Now see, clearly we can see that here x of s is a sum, sum of three different terms, okay. So we can just write it as x1s plus x2 of s into e to the power minus 2s, okay. This is just multiplication in e property, right. We are shifting in time domain, okay. We have seen this that shifting in time domains creates multiplication with e in s domain, okay. So this is just going to cause shifting in time domain. So I can just write this separately plus x3s into e to the power minus 4s where, where if I just want to define them separately, I can write x1s as 2 upon s square plus 4s plus 3 x2s is 2s upon s square plus 4s plus 3 and x3s is going to be 4 upon s square plus 4s plus 3. Now see these are just normal partial fractions and you can simply find out simply find out the inverse Laplace for these functions. Now see xs was this okay and we can find out inverse laplace of these functions now using linearity property what can you say xt is going to be xt is going to be x1t plus see since we this this had multiplication with e to the power minus 2s this is going to be going to cause a shift in time domain shifting in time domain causes multiplication with the e in s domain right so this is what the final expression is going to be. If you just solve these partial fractions, you are going to find out that x1t is going to be e to the power minus t minus e to the power minus 3t ut. Okay, you can just uh, solve this partial fractions very easy. x2t is going to be minus e to the power minus t plus 3 e to the power minus 3t ut. And x3t is going to be 2 e to the power minus t minus e to the power minus 3t ut. Okay. 
using the just we saw the examples of solving partial fractions you can find these uh, inverse laplace so my final function x of t is going to be e to the power minus t minus e to the power minus 3t into u of t plus minus e shift of 2 right and here we are going to have shift of 4 fine so this is how we are finding inverse laplace transforms okay we are never using that formula the one formula that we learned in the starting we are not using that formula anyways okay we are just using partial fractions and our knowledge of the inverse laplace from that table and finding inverse laplace transform of all the functions 